Hey guys, uh, JD here. I'm back for day three of our 31 day digging deeper video series on the book of Proverbs and the wisdom we find therein. Once again, I'm excited to be with you to continue learning from the book of Proverbs with you. And today we're going to be discussing chapter three. Now, chapter three is a speech from a father to his son about the benefits of pursuing wisdom, about almost like making it our life's work to to learn more and more and more wisdom and how to live well in God's world. The, the whole chapter is full of instruction from this father to his son saying, go after wisdom, chase wisdom, seek wisdom, be more wise and continue to learn more. Similarly to yesterday's video, um, we're going to be having an upcoming lesson on the first 12 verses of chapter three. And that lesson is called Wisdom for Relating to Our Heavenly Father. It's gonna be coming up in a couple weeks. So if, if this particular video um, gives you some interest in hearing more about Proverbs chapter three, make sure you check out that upcoming lesson at GNG, either on our website or come on into church to check that out. I'm looking forward to that lesson and I think it's gonna be a ton of fun. So join us for that if you can. Now, late in chapter three of the book of Proverbs, this father who is speaking to his son makes a couple of comments to his son about the benefits that come with chasing wisdom. The father's trying to get his son to see that seeking godly wisdom is perhaps the most important thing that his son can do. And, and because there's some profound benefits that he, he tries to address that come from being wise people. And so what I want to do is I want to just take a moment to read this passage to you uh, so that we can all learn from it. So we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. So let's, let's read this all together. Verses 21 through 26. He says, My son... Do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you, I'm sorry, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked, for the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. Now, this passage is super important, especially for the season of life that we're in right now. As with all of you, we're kind of coming out of the experience of the coronavirus pandemic. We're not completely out of it yet, obviously, but we're, we're in the process of beginning to, to reopen life. But the coronavirus situation has been one of the scariest and deadliest outbreaks uh, in, 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 in recent American history. All of us have been affected by it in profound ways, whether through the disease itself, through watching those we love go through it, or through the economic impact of it. You know, lost jobs, lost wages, businesses and family concerns, all that kind of stuff. Simply put, this pandemic has produced significant concerns and problems for everyone in America. And yet, when I read these verses, there was a message that just kind of got stuck in my brain. The, the, this phrase kept coming to my mind, and it was this. Wisdom is greater than worry. I'm going to say that again. Wisdom is greater than worry. I think this father is trying to convince his son to chase wisdom because wisdom is really, truly greater than all the things that we worry about in life. Notice how the father begins. I'm going to kind of give you my paraphrase. He's, he's basically like, son, go after wisdom, understanding, good judgment, and discretion with everything you've got and never, ever, ever let them go. Never, never just ignore them. Just seek wisdom with everything you've got. In other words, he's telling his son to make the pursuit of wisdom his highest priority. And then he proceeds to tell him why. Look at what he says. He says, you will go in safety. Your foot will not stumble. 
You'll have good sleep because you won't be afraid. You won't fear your past or your enemies coming back to get you, right? Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty great list of benefits of wisdom, right? I would go so far as to say that if there was a product at Walmart that we could walk in and buy that would promise to accomplish those four things for us, the shelves would be cleared faster than toilet paper in the coronavirus, right? right? But, but here's the deal. All of those are things that we worry about. Think about that. We worry about our safety. We worry about making mistakes or failures or stumbles that cause us to experience negative consequences. We worry about having, or we have all experienced a bad night of sleep because of worry and anxiety, right? We all have things in our past that we don't like to talk about and that we hope don't ever come out into the light, right? So, the, so, so what the, the, the father is saying to his son is chase wisdom because it's going to lead you into a life where you don't have to spend all your time Worrying, wisdom is greater than worry. You see, that's what the father's trying to tell his son. Because when we have wisdom, it decreases our need to worry. Wisdom is greater than worry because when we have more and more and more wisdom, it decreases our need to worry. Let me explain that. I think there's three reasons for that. Reason number one. When we have true wisdom, we know that our eternity is secure. When we have true wisdom, we know that our eternity is secure. Think about it. When we have faith in God through Christ Jesus and we align our lives to, to him, then we know that our, our eternity is secure. Death, disease, fear of our sins being too great for his grace, fear of our past, all of that worry can be gone. That's, that's the truth. All of that worry can be gone. We know that Christ's sacrifice covers our past sins, and so we don't have any need to worry about it. But we also don't need to worry about losing this life because we have perfect assurance in the resurrected Jesus that this life is not all there is. Our eternity is secure. So when we have wisdom, first and foremost, we know that our eternity is secure. Reason number two, when we live with wisdom, we avoid the things that cause us to worry. Notice, notice what the father says to his son. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. In other words, he's saying, because, because we have this base level of knowledge that our eternity is secure, we don't have to fear sudden disasters. We don't have to be afraid of that stuff. We don't, it, kind of like what we talked about yesterday, we don't have to be afraid that God isn't going to provide for us in those difficult moments of life. We can, we can know that's going to happen, right? But he says, have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. Now, let me, that's a really important phrase. What is the ruin that overtakes the wicked? Well, let's think about it a different way. What makes evil people worry? What makes evil people worry? The idea of getting caught and punished. The idea of their past catching up to them. That's what makes evil people worry. And the reality, I mean, that, that reality that there's probably somebody in our past that wants to get back at us for some wrong that we've done to them, right? Well, think about it. When we live with wisdom, it allows us to avoid piling up more and more and more people and more and more and more things that could come back to bite us, right? So what the father is saying to the son is when, when we live with wisdom, we get to avoid some of the things that make us worry, like people coming, coming to get us because we've wronged them or situations that we're trying to hide and cover up coming out into the light and destroying our lives. When we live with wisdom... We can avoid a bunch of the stuff that causes us to worry and freak out. Reason number three why worry is greater than or wisdom is greater than worry. Sorry. <laughs> Reason number three: living with wisdom helps us differentiate between a real disaster and a non-disaster. Right? Remember what it says. He says, "Have no fear of sudden disaster." In verse twenty-five, have no fear of sudden disaster. Here's what worry, worry does, guys. 
Worry turns many of our everyday problems into disasters. They make us feel like the problem that we're facing is the end of the world. But when you think about it, very few things in life are actually a disaster, especially when you approach life from an eternal perspective. Dying and going to hell is a disaster. Failing to chase wisdom and, and, and failing to live our lives with honesty and with kindness and generosity toward others, yeah, that's kind of a disaster, right? Living life far away from the will of God and outside of relationship with him, yeah, that's a disaster. Those are actual disasters. And all of the other problems in life truly do pale in comparison. Wisdom teaches us this. Yeah, having a relationship problem with your spouse or with a friend, yeah, that's a problem. It's a, it's a real problem. Is it something that we should work on? Of course. Is it, is it something that should, should cause us concern? Yeah. Same with losing a job or scaring, staring down the barrel of a scary diagnosis. All of those things are real problems. They're problems and they're scary and they're, 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 they're difficult. But they're not actually disasters. They're problems, but they're not disasters. Such things have a beginning and an end. And they can't touch us in eternity. I'm going to say that again. Such things like relationship problems and work problems and money problems and bad diagnoses, they all have a beginning and an end. And they can't touch us in eternity. So wisdom helps us differentiate between what's really a disaster and what's really not a disaster. And it gives us the strength and the, the, the wisdom to respond accordingly. In the end, guys, when we look at this passage, wisdom is much greater than worry. And in many cases, wisdom is almost the antidote for worry. In other words, the more wisdom we have and the more clarity we have about God and ourselves and about eternity, the more we have that, the less we have to worry. Now, the only question left is where do we run to to get this wisdom? Just like we talked about yesterday. To God and to his word, which are the source of wisdom in our world. Guys, I hope this has been helpful to you. Because the, because the reality is chasing wisdom and learning to live from the wisdom of God's word is going to be one of those things that helps make our lives less worrisome. And if we truly commit ourselves to the wisdom of God and to following him in everything that he calls us to do, we will live less worried lives because wisdom is greater than worry. I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Look forward to spending some more time with you tomorrow as we discuss chapter four. See you then.